uh, we're reporting here for Chicago Independent Television. I'm David Kennedy. And uh, we're just going around and talking to various people that have interesting signs. Uh, Stop War Funding representative from the Albany Park, North Park, Mayfair Neighbors for Peace and Justice. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Neil Reznikoff. One of the things that the AFL-CIO has uh, left out for years is the uh, role of the U.S. wars, the aggressions abroad, and in terms of uh, cuts on workers, they ignore the solution of getting money from the war budget, which is huge. You can take all of the state uh, so-called budget deficits combined as uh, less than one-tenth of the total uh, war budget. So the AFL-CIO uh, doesn't bring up uh, that issue. So we're here with our signs to uh, bring that up. 52 cents of every federal tax dollar goes to the military budget. So uh, there's plenty of money there, plus the bailout to the Wall Street, the various bankers and corporations, uh, the corporations that don't pay any taxes. There's plenty of money available for these um, uh, attacks to pay for the, uh, there's no need for the attacks on the workers. And AFL-CIO should be uh, addressing that as a problem. and. Uh, not uh, coming up with other solutions such as tax increases or anything else. Uh, so what is the AFL-CIO focusing on that perhaps they're focusing on the tactics instead of the strategy, right? Well, AFL-CIO uh, does call for the workers to get together, but it's not too clear what they should get together for. If they don't have a clear path of uh, trying to uh, insist that the uh, working people have a say-so, in the government that their opinions be recognized, which would result in an anti-war government, then we're going to continue with the uh, bulk of the people being ignored. Peach. I'm president of the support staff of District 39. Uh, we're, we're part of the uh, IFT Local 1274. So tell me what brings you here today? Uh, I'm here to fight for the rights of uh, teachers to negotiate contracts. Yes, there's an organization of uh, corporate leaders who are trying to reform um, the rights of teachers in education. They're, they're saying they're for education reform. And really what they're trying to do is to destroy the right for teachers to negotiate and to privatize education. Well, it's important for uh, teachers to be able to collectively bargain because the teachers are there standing for the students, the children of Illinois. And so if they strip that right, then um, corporations and private companies will come in and take over the schools and they'll be working for the maximum profit, not the maximum uh, rewards for the students. So, so it's really important for everybody to care about this because it affects the future of our children. So it's, it's really exciting and, and heartening to see all the different unions come together, the, the uh, Teamsters unions and the, and the uh, teachers unions and the firefighters, everybody coming together to work for those rights. It's very heartening. My name is uh, Andy Bolduck, and uh, yeah, I'm a, a member of the IWW. I've been a member since January. Uh, basically, we're just trying to make sure that the IWW has a presence um, at these labor events, uh, also to talk to people and um, uh, spread the idea that we need to start taking um, militant union actions rather than a political strategy which has led us to this point. We've been trying to use politics to, up to this point and it's led us right into the ditch. We need to start 
doing using direct action to uh, to th that's the only way the union movement is going to uh, be revitalized. There, the the uh, solution offered um, here today by most of these union leaders has been let's support Democrats. We'll just keep continue to support Democrats, and somehow uh, we'll pack you know legislatures and and school boards and all different you know uh, um, political bodies with with more Democrats and they'll uh, support us but they haven't been doing that so far um, they have they, they, they're the ones who have brought us to the point where you know essentially we're begging we're begging you know uh, uh, not to have our rights taken away we'll accept all the concessions in the world you know take this take that just don't take these collective bargaining rights we need to get a little more militant and demand you know, through direct action, that uh, that you know things change. We got it. I, I mean, uh, nothing but a massive uprising is going to change. Is going to change our politics. Is going to is going to change. Um, uh, is going to stop this attack on workers. Really, the uh, pie in the sky goal is a general strike. Um, and 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 uh, and I think rank and file union members need to push their union leaders to be you know taking more militant action, um, uh, or, or or not not just supporting Democrats. Hi, this is uh, David Kennedy with Chicago Independent Television, and we're reporting at the April 9th We Are One rally, which uh, was organized by the AFL-CIO, but has many has a great diversity of organizations that are represented here not all under the banner of the AFL-CIO many of them actually critical of the AFL-CIO's position on uh, politics versus organizing from the bottom up anyway uh, here is Blanco with the United Steel Workers uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us the organizations that you're involved with please Okay, my name is Blanca Morales. I'm a steel worker, specifically a woman of steel. My local union number is Local Union 3657. Well, and you know, uh, we no longer just think United States. We think of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. And specifically now, this coming July 28th will be the fifth anniversary of very, very awful uh, strike that is happening in Cananea, Sonora, Mexico, with the miners. They have been uh, assaulted by troops uh, numerous times, and we're talking about thousands of troops that have invaded Cananea, have removed our members, our brothers and sisters from the front of the mines, have assaulted women and children. Um, the um, Americans, and I'm an American, you know, I'm a Mexican-American, but America has to understand as long as the standard of living is going to be poverty level in Mexico, People are going to come here. They're going to come here by droves. No parent is going to let a, a child starve. You know, it just, even if you have to divide families, a parent is going to come here to work. And, you know, we're not talking about, you know, uh, jobs that are going to make someone here again rich. We're just talking about someone with the ability to work here at a menial job to send money back home so people can survive. So I would say that I would send a message to President Calderon to rethink what he's doing with the miners in Mexico, specifically in Cananea. There's three locations that are on strike right now that have been, like I said, for five years. He needs to rethink his policies and his attacks on union working people in Mexico. So Grupo Mexico, shame on you, because that's the conglomerate that owns the mines. They're leasing the mines in Cananea today. Um, I would just have to say solidarity forever, and that means globally. That means everyone out there. You know, we've got to beat this. You know, this this monster that's attacking all our livelihoods. You've got to put it to an end, and it begins with each and every one of us. Don't let someone else do the work that you need to be working. There's too many of us that are at work making money while the rest of us are sacrificing our livelihoods to do it for you. So I say, brothers and sisters, solidarity forever. Thank you.